This is the Note Closer Show, where you get the latest developments in distressed note investing and learn the secrets of how you can control millions of dollars worth of property for pennies on the dollar. Get educated and entertained by someone who has closed thousands of deals and lives to support you in achieving the same. Now, here's your host, CEO of We Close Notes, Scott Carson. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Note Closer Show. I'm your host, Scott Carson. Excited to have you on today, tomorrow, tonight, whenever you're watching this live or listening to it live on iTunes. Uh, it is episode 153. Today is Friday in the office, so we like to have Friday called Funding Fridays. Right, everybody? Yes. We like to hear the sound of money coming in and making money. All right. So, Today, what we wanted to do, so having a guest on, we wanted to basically spend today, today's episode, kind of breaking down a deal that we just got reinstated. And I thought we would go through it from start to finish for everybody and open up to questions. So while I'm going through some stuff here and talking, uh, Greg, Nicole, make sure you guys are, are following along for, as we have any questions that pop up. So um, for those that don't know, my business model is to buy defaulted debt, first lien positions, and work to get stuff reinstated, work to keep the bowlers in the property at all possible. Now, that doesn't mean I overpay for the assets because I also keep in mind, I'm probably gonna have to foreclose half the time, right? We got some deadbeat borrowers that tell us, no, I'm not gonna pay my mortgage, right? <laughs> <laughs> when we send letters or make have the servicers make phone calls, they're, 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 they're hearing this. That's blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a chart button. Yes, I have my buttons this morning. I'm excited <laughs> to be entertaining this morning. But anyway, so we buy defaulted debt in a regular basis. We've been buying it since 2007, uh, closed on thousands of transactions, bought I think almost over a billion dollars in debt. Um, one of the great things, though, is if you have a solid business model, solid plan, you can often, and as long as you work your plan, that makes sense with what's going on you can really clean house in a great way financially and monetarily speaking to really have some great cash flow, some great deals. So I like to go where the market gives me the most amount of deals. Initially, when I started, it was a lot of commercial notes, especially apartment loans. It was also a lot of low balance, ugly, ugly subprime loan stuff that we bought. <clears throat> As that has evolved over the last few years, we've gone more, okay, let's go residential side is commercial uh, tightened up some, uh, also, as markets like California, Arizona, and the West Coast got more expensive, I transitioned from there to more so Florida, South Carolina. And as those markets have increased in value and pricing over the last few years, that's made me evolve and kind of transition into more, as I call it, college football territory. And what I mean by that, buying a lot of the assets recently have come from the Big Ten Southeast Conference parts of the United States. So those that aren't football fans or, or college fans, what's the Big Ten include? Well, that's like Pennsylvania, Minnesota, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, um, those kind of areas. And then you also talk about the Southeast Conference. That's like Missouri, um, rolling into uh, Tennessee, the Carolinas, um, a lot of those areas through the Rust Belt aspect of things. So we see a lot of those assets and we've actually always seen a lot of assets in those areas, but those markets have started to come back over the last couple of years strong. And as more note investors have kind of started coming into the picture, I still believe we only have really truly 5,000 true note investors out there. They're actually buying stuff on a regular basis, but we do see more, as I like to call them, REO refugees, people that can't buy properties at the foreclosure auction or people that aren't getting any leads to their thousands of postcards a month. They're starting to look for better deals or better pricing because all the fix and flip shows and all of AMC TV and HGTV have a lot of people thinking they can be weekend warriors and, and buy property or they can buy a foreclosure or buy uh, an ugly property and fix it up. So they're overpaying for assets because they're thinking they're doing a great job and they're buying off of after repair value. Well, as no investors, we don't buy off after repair value because we're probably never going to get to the ARV aspect of things. Never going to get to putting repairs in properly. Hopefully, if our business model works out, being a note investor, to focus on cash flow. 
And so I've been looking at things now. What has sprung up specifically a lot in the last couple of years, especially the last, I'd say more so the two, last 24 months, was a lot of contract for deeds. Now, contract for deeds are like a rent to own. I won't say like a lease option, but very similar to that where the institution, the person owns the property. In this case, let's just say Harbor Portfolio. They're one of the well-known. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of these contract for deeds that what they originally were, they were buying these large pools of low value properties for literally, most of them were less than 10 grand. Buying them cheap, putting minimal work into them and offering kind of technically a contract for a deed. Not right, not right really owner financing, but they were basically willing to carry the paper on these assets to, and you know, buyers to come and put the thousand, two thousand dollars down. But the buyers wouldn't actually own the property until the net was paid off. That's why it's a contract for deed. So if the borrower didn't make a payment, what happens? They get evicted. The bank, or in this case, Harbor doesn't have to go through a long foreclosure process. Now, there are some states out there that require that, hey, if you've been in a property for a couple of years or you've got more than 25% equity, then you have to go through a foreclosure process. But that's okay because, hey, if you've got equity behind your note and you're foreclosing, hey, You've got some opportunity to make it up, but it also protects the borrower as well if they've done a good job as far as paying on time or staying in the property and fixing it up. Now, what we see, <laughs> contract for deeds fall into kind of two categories, all right? They're either paying or they ain't paying, all right? Uh, if they're paying, great. you got somebody taking care of the property, keeping it up, doing some maintenance, paying taxes, paying insurance on the property. Those that aren't paying, usually turn into pretty ugly properties pretty relatively quickly. Can we agree to that? Yeah. Um, I don't like vacant properties because then I do have to foreclose most of the time. Then I do have to put work in the property and I have to make sure the AC, the air conditioner doesn't grow legs and walk off. Mm -hmm. Or hopefully that the copper goblins don't show up and somebody trash out my property. Now, it doesn't mean I won't buy some vacant contract for deeds because if it is vacant, the borrower's moved on. Instead of having to go through a foreclosure process, it's basically a cancellation of contract. Now you have an REO. Now you can do a variety of things with it. Either turn around and sell it as an REO, keep it as a rental, owner finance, do another contract for deed, uh, do a variety of things. All right. So it gives you some flexibility. Now, what I like about these contract for deeds, though, especially if they've been hit and miss, because they're usually dealing with somebody who doesn't have the greatest of credit. You're usually dealing with somebody um, that's going to pay a little bit more for housing. You know, poor people pay more on a per square foot basis. For, for housing when it comes to rent and other things like that. You're also primarily going to see assets you know, below probably $70,000 in value and probably more so $50,000 in value. Why? Well, that's why contract for deeds are so valuable. Most banks don't want to do a loan for 50 grand. It doesn't make any sense for them. I mean, they can do a loan. Some will do it, but a lot of the loan officers don't make any money on a $50,000 loan. That's why a contract for deed is so valuable because I could create a contract for deed with my attorney Boom, get it created and off and running <clears throat> because I'm the owner. I'm going to make profit on the cash flow. A loan officer, a $50,000 loan might make a couple hundred bucks just because of traditional fees and appraisal fees and closing costs and stuff like that. With a traditional mortgage, they're not going to make any money. But with a $50,000 contract for deed, hey, if I can somebody come bringing two, $3,000 down and they're willing to have payments based on like a 9 to 10% interest rate, which is really true market interest rate for somebody who has bad credit these days. Let's just face it. I don't like to give somebody a 5% interest rate if they can't actually go out and qualify for it. So do we have any questions from anybody right now yet on that stuff? Okay. So, <clears throat> so what, do, what happens? Well, we get lists of these contract free for deeds. What on a biweekly basis, Jen? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> You can yeah. use that. If you just want to use one word answers, I've got all the buttons for you. Well, yes. All right. You can use that one. Sounds like Ellen DeGeneres. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Good. Awesome. Just as long as you don't say. No. All right. Or this one. Bullshit detected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. All right. So <clears throat> as we're going through stuff, um, one of our, uh, one actually one of my biggest goals is for us to basically be closing on on average, at least an asset a day throughout the year. One asset a day is 365 deals. Now, a lot of people are like, oh my God, it's a lot. When you have systems in place and you have marketing in place, that's not so difficult, all right? Some people are like, oh my God, I haven't closed my first deal yet. I couldn't even think about closing on 100 assets at one time. That's okay. You, you evolve, right, everybody? 
we have plenty of people that close on their first deals and they move it on to three or four and then 10, 15, 20, right? So, <clears throat> so we get these lists in and uh, actually, Jen, since you're closer here, I know, put you on the spot here. Good morning. You got to speak a little louder. Good morning. There you go. I think you got a pair. All right. <laughs> <There I go. laughs> Yours are just higher up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so one of the great things is when we get these mm-hmm. lists in, what's, what's one philosophy or one thing when I look at these spreadsheets that we often see that I like? It's like a pop quiz on a Friday morning, right? Yeah. The ROI? The ROI is yeah. good. I agree with that, oh, Nicole, last, in a second. Ha- last payment date. Yes. Oh. First thing, yeah. First thing we do is look at the last paid day. Um, as long as it's been within this. Usually we do it within the past year to filter them out. There you go. With. So we get 400 assets in. What do we usually see? 50 to 100 of them that have made payments in the last... 12 months. I don't know. This last day, we had like 120. We did have quite a bit. Yeah. So th- it ranges. There's usually yeah. a good chunk of them have made payments in the last year. Now, the philosophy behind this, if somebody's made payments in the last year, six months, three months, especially the, the most recent payments, you can mm, almost guarantee the borrowers want to stay in the property. Right, everybody? Right. Yes. Yes. There you go. Here, should I give you yes, no buttons over here? <laughs> Greg, you want just a bullshit button in the back <laughs> over there? <clears throat> so one of the things we do... Okay, okay. If they made payments the last 12 months, great. Then Greg and Jen and Nicole, let's do this. Greg, you answer this question. Okay. What's one of the things that we do? We want to ensure that they're making payments. What's one thing about the property we want to look at? Oh, utilities, yeah. Utilities. What about the utilities? To make sure they're active and on. They're making active and on. Why? Because if they're paying their water bill, they're usually living in There you go. Hey. And occupancy. It's a way to check occupancy remotely. Calling the county, uh, the county, you know, the water, the gas, the electricity, when we can. Uh, it's gotten a little bit more different for the power because of uh, deregulation. exactly deregulation. There'd be a lot more that people choose from. But still, pretty much it's, it's one gas company, one water company, right? Yeah. So we can see they make payments in the last six, three, 12 months. Power's on the property. Then we also do what? We send somebody by the property, right? Mm-hmm. CMAs. CMAs. We get, well, we get a realtor to pull CMAs, right. but we want them to put eyes on the property too. Having a realtor pull a desktop CMA is okay, but you really needed them to put their eyes on the property and realize, oh, the CMA is actually for a good property or, oh no, <laughs> it's Jumanji in the backyard. All right. The CMA does not reflect Jumanji. Okay. So. We're looking at these lists. We're identifying. Honestly, on the first inside, we're not diving into what, before we make an offering. We're not getting realtors to drive by. We're not calling power companies yet. We're assuming, yes, assume that they made payments the last twelve months. If they're occupied, probably in decent shape. And so we initially make an offer off of a stair step method, right? Yes. Now, <clears throat> some of these contract for deeds were written two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. The values of these properties have gone up while the, the mortgage payments are the same, but the mortgage balances are, are creeping down a little bit. So one of the things that we do is we just do a quick stair-step model pricing off of the unpaid balance. And this comes directly from our hedge fund source. We won't name names, but our hedge fund source say, yeah, base it off of the unpaid balance because it could be all over the place. Right. So what I mean by stair-step method, if an asset's worth more than 50, we're making an offer at 55% of the unpaid principal balance. That's unpaid principal balance, not payoff, UPB. That's what the principal balance is they're still paying down. If it's in the 40s, a value we're making an offer at 45% of UPB. If it's an unpaid balance in the 30s, 35%. If it's below $30,000 mortgage, uh, <clears throat> 25%. But we usually don't get into those lower balances. We try to stay above, okay. yeah, 20, 25 for sure. Just because if you do have something that turns out to be vacant and you got to replace a water heater or one major system in a house, you're basically eh, in the in the red now instead of the black. So we looked at these assets. We ran a quick stair-step model, pricing point. And then what we did next, Nicole, you hit it right on the first thing. Oh, the ROI? ROI, exactly. Now, how we figure a rough ROI calculator is, okay, let's see if we can get a reinstate. So we take their existing payments. Mm-hmm. Multiply it times 12. Now, why do we take the existing payment versus either a lower amount or a higher amount? Well, 99% of the cases, market rent on these properties is going to be higher or lesser? Higher. To be higher. Yeah, exactly. So market rent is going to almost always be higher than an existing payment. 
So the philosophy of this is, Mr. and Mrs. Borrower, listen, if you're going to move out, you're going to be paying rent mm -hmm. to somebody else. Now, how exactly do we say that? Now, listen. there you go. A little Southern listen. on it. Little, little, little Southern English, as we'd like to say. Okay? So now listen, you're going to have to pay because you can't stay. All right. So we take the resisting payment, multiply it times 12 because 12 months, divide that then by what our quick stair-step pricing uh, offer is. And we can run that really easy in literally like 30 seconds. Now, what I love is the fact is if I give the list to them here in the office, in like 10 minutes, they've run that. They've run that stair-step model. They've figured 12 months. They've figured rough ROIs, which is phenomenal. <laughs> do I not get excited about that? Yes, I do. Oh, I get excited because that – then we can then organize those high to low, higher returns versus lower returns. And we can figure out which ones we really want to focus on. So we get 400 in, we may be able to identify the first 100, and that's the ones we're working on, right? So a couple things. <clears throat> when we so Then we submit an offer, right? Just a yes. quick offer real fast. Let's get the ball rolling. On average, Jen, um, oh, how many of them are we getting countered back or accepted? Usually all of them get countered back, um, with maybe a handful accepted to begin with, mm -hmm. initial. Well, and that's true because we submitted 100 last month, and we had only 40 that got countered back. There were 60 that weren't available anymore. Oh, yeah. yeah well, yes. That's what so, I was trying to get kind of a okay. number aspect. Of. Okay, so, yeah. So we submitted offers on 100, roughly 50% come back that we go right. to the next level. Right. Either 50, like we're not even close, you know, mm -hmm. we sold it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, how do we whittle that number down, Greg? Well, based on ROI, um, the utilities, and then um, what the realtors, they're, what they think the quick sell pricing is, and if they were occupied, they see lights on. Yeah, so that's then, once we get that number back, we're saying, okay, we went from 100 to 40, that's when these peeps put on their super-powered capes and start getting realtors involved mm -hmm. and making phone calls. That's that's the longest part of the due diligence process, right, everybody? It's like yes. Cats. It's like herding cats and, on crack. And, and pulling teeth. Well, pulling teeth is a better. It's yes. like herding a cat you just pull its teeth on, right? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't want to touch you at all. It doesn't. It's like running around like, oh, my God, don't, no. I'll do the work, but no, I won't do the work. So yeah. that's the diff difficult thing. So if you're out there trying to get realtors to pull values and stuff like that, trust me, we deal with difficulties as well. One of the things that we'll do is we always try to get them to pull a desktop CMA and drive by, say, hey, this could potentially be an offering for you, a listing. If that doesn't work, then we will, you know, up, ultimately pay them up to 50 bucks. Sometimes we'll go a little higher depending on if there's a couple more in the area, but pay them 50 bucks for the CMA. Now, they'll go out, then they get drive by, and then they'll give us photos, then that helps us out with true values and stuff. Now, one thing we always ask is we want a 30-day quick sale price, right? Mm -hmm. But we also want to see the number. Sometimes... Hey, if, it, if it's a longer days on market, 30-day quick sale price means you're dropping the value down cheap. Mm -hmm. mm. The asset may be worth 60, but 30-day quick sale price may be 20. Mm -hmm. So that's why you've got to literally look at the CMAs to make sure what it looks like. And of course, sometimes CMAs are way across the board. Oh, this is worth anywhere from 30 to 60, and you've got to narrow yeah. down. You know, it's it's a bit of a difference. You got to narrow down. Okay, what are the 60s? Are those bigger properties, smaller properties, properties in good condition versus ours? Does ours have a blue tarp on the roof? Is it half blue? blue Is it half blue paint? Exactly. Did the scarves get a hold of it? <laughs> Is Gargoyle the next door neighbor? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, it, that's a lot of the due diligence looking at and then determining, okay, looking at what the seller, all right, what does the seller want as far as a counter? Do they accept their offer to the counter? Did their counter make sense? Do we still think we can make sizable chunk. Now, some of the, the um, KPIs we put in there or uh, benchmarks is we don't want to go below 24% ROI. Right. Why 24% on a rough, taking 12 months of payments divided by 12, divide, 12 months of payments divided by where the counter or accepted offer should equal 24% or greater. Why? Because if we've got to split the cash flow, we want to make sure and see that our, our cash investors are seeing a decent return. Right. Okay, now we're only going to pay them quarterly, that gives us really 90 days to really do some of their magic to get this stuff paying me, paying like that. Now, one thing we don't consider in is that the bar is going to make up any back payments. Right. A lot of times they will make up back payments to some sizable chunk. 
chunk could be 500 bucks, could be a couple grand, it just depends. <clears throat> now, my philosophy on this is, and I don't think I've, I've only told one of the persons, literally, if I can have a 50% hit rate on these, where 50% start modifying and reinstating, I'm doing okay. Because the other half, if they don't pay, what am I going to do with those, Nicole? Foreclose. Foreclose, evict. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these are faster evictions than in foreclosing. So I just cancel the contract and then I can turn around and sell as an REO. Give it to our realtor. Hey, let's get cash. Boom, get our investor paid back. And then we're splitting proceeds and moving on. Okay. Any questions from anybody so far? Okay. So <clears throat> one of the things that we like to do as well, which we were just doing a little bit this morning, is besides Greg, Nicole, Jennifer, call in the city, Talking to lovely people in the water departments. They really are. They nice, are. So. They really are nice. <laughs> <laughs> the water, think about it. They're sitting in a cubicle all day, like you know, trying to track down really yeah. mean people that don't have payments. You they talk to one nice person, they're gonna tell you things. But they work from like seven to two, and then they're off on like Thursdays and Fridays. They work three days a week for five hours a day. I would be pretty damn happy too. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you're right. If you're nice and you have a small oh, yeah. phone, yeah, yes, we'll ma'am. Man, be respectful. They know we're from Texas when we yeah. call. Oh, they love it when we're from oh, Texas, yeah. right? Yeah. And so what are some of the things that you've heard from these people at the city department, the kind of information? So, Greg, what's one thing you've heard that's been interesting? My favorite one was this lady was talking. I asked her about a property. She said, oh, he was in here the other day. He was telling me about a tree he was cleaning up that had fallen down during a storm. And she knew the guy. And so it was just like, okay, he's living there, taking care of the place after a storm. Probably going to be a decent, you know. Uh, these are property to look at at least. So pride of ownership, pride of ownership mm -hmm. yeah. right? So we put a big check on that one, yeah, right? We, we green -lined it. Exactly. Jen, what's something you've heard? Um, services are on, but they haven't paid their bill for what was it four four months? And she said, but with her reputation, that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> with so, your reputation, it doesn't surprise yeah. me. What does that mean? I I don't know, but. <laughs> She, she knew the problem? Yeah, no, she knew. And she said, she was like, she'll probably pay it when it hits six months. Oh, okay. So, so that tells you somebody who's habitually late on the power, mm -hmm. but they may also be self-employed, peaks and valleys. They eventually pay it, yeah. So, okay. That's more like we call that kind of a scratch and dent yeah, loan. How do they go that long without paying their bill and yeah. still having services on? Well, some cities are very lenient about oh, things. Yeah. Well, that's why they're in shitholes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's how you really feel. Okay. <laughs> Nicole, what's one of the most interesting things you've heard from the city? Uh, probably the power where he was like, "Yeah, he's on. He, it's on, but you know, he's never really there." Or so, I don't know. He stayed kind of, usually small towns that we call usually know the people, and so they're, oh, he's never really there, or you know, all that jazz. And, it, exactly. They. Yeah. I mean, we've also had one. They. Oh yeah, they're on a payment plan yeah. for their utilities. Right. They're on time. Uh, I think one of you said one time that they got in a fight in the lobby or were arguing with their wife or spouse uh, one time. Yeah, yeah. Well, going back to Nicole, um, they'll let you know, like, the services are on, but there's very limited usage. So mm -hmm. they'll let you know that they're not home often. So yeah. they may be traveling, whatever the case may be. Maybe um, working. Right. May not be, may, may be an elderly individual where the power is at least on, but they're, right. it's, it's, right. it's not vacant, but yeah. right. unoccupied is a better way to say it. Right. So we have a lot of information. Now, another thing that we do, Due diligence wise, is what else do we do besides calling the city? Internet sleuthing. <laughs> Internet sleuthing, aka Facebook stalking. Borrow research. Borrow research. research before the right party contact. This is all, this is things we're doing before we close. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we have found some interesting things doing some internet sleuthing and being our own Sherlock Holmes mm -hmm. when it comes to things. Jen, what's an interesting thing you found with a borrower before? Um, Probably the one that had the barber shop that he did his fresh fades. But oh yeah, yeah. He um he hadn't. I don't know how far behind he was on payments. Um, he had made a recent payment within the past six months, but he had not um made any progress since then. And so, uh, when we went to go find his information, he was self-employed with the barber shop, and he had gone traveling. He'd gone to Disneyland. He had all these places. He had traveled. Um, brand new car, had his own business, had all of his fresh fade pictures on He could there. do a lot of good stuff, but he couldn't pay on time. Yeah. But I think a lot of the, what we see, especially with these contract for deeds, mm -hmm. is the borrowers want to pay, but the servicing company that's behind it just sucks. Can we agree with that? Yes. 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 They just don't do a really good job. And so that actually works in our favor because we find all this information when we reach out. There's pretty easy conversations to have, mm -hmm. right? What's another interesting thing, Greg, that you found? 
I uh, actually screenshotted this one. Oh yeah. I'm going to read it to you. <gasps> she, the borrower on this one said, I asked my daughter, does she want to go to Disney world or have a place to stay? Long story short, <gasps> yes. we're about to be homeless when we get back. <laughs> yes. I remember this That's one. right. Yeah. Yeah. Was, they got their priorities right. <laughs> oh my God. Obama ain't going to save us, but, but Mickey Mouse is. We'll be happy for a week. That was my favorite. It's the most oh, magical oh place God. on earth. Yeah. I remember that. That's the sad and thing. Her, her daughter, she has a kid involved. Yeah. yeah. And she, the picture showed her standing mm -hmm. with her kid. And yeah. They had yeah. The Mickey Mouse ears. Oh. Mouse, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. I don't have a lot of a sympathy for people like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> that makes me angry. It yeah. makes me. Yeah, exactly. When you have kids around, it makes yeah. you very, very angry because you're not doing the right thing. You're not teaching the right no. financial uh, habits. Yeah. Well, yeah. Responsibility is out the Principles, window. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we've seen some interesting things. Nicole, you found somebody one time that was going through a bit of a transition. To oh, involve. yeah, that was that was Jim, but um, he was replacing his um, mortgage payment for his hormonal <laughs> therapy. Hormonal yeah. therapy. He was going yeah. through a bit of a transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we call it the Caitlyn Jenner house. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we've had, it, it's not all bad people either. Like, no. I, I found one where... Um, they they just had a baby and i guess the dad lost his job and they even set up a gofundme to help pay their mortgage and help pay for like um, uh, stuff for the kid and everything like that so it's not always like they're making really bad decisions it's, you mm -hmm. know just life. it's just life yeah sometimes so yeah. but that's a beautiful thing sleuthing because if they got a gofundme account mm -hmm. you can click on the gofundme account to find out how much money they've raised mm -hmm. yeah. for it that works in your favor being the lender to see that stuff like mm, hey Mr. And Mrs. Barr, I own your mortgage now. Mm -hmm. What can you do? And they tell you a thousand bucks. You finally got eight grand raised from a GoFundMe. Like, yeah, yeah let, listen. listen. <laughs> We're going to need a little more than that. All right. So all sorts of interesting things yes. we find. So that helps us determine yes or no, right? Yes. We're going to make a yes on that. We're going to say yes to this deal and take it down. Still looking at the ROI, still looking at possible outcomes if we have to reinstate or still if we have to foreclose or evict to, to make money on the thing. So. Uh, let's go through this last tape. So we went through, we had a hundred, we made offers. Well, we had 400 something, 423. Made offers on 101, 102. We ended up getting 40 countered back. Mm -hmm. We ended up finalizing the realtor BPOs, our internet sleuthing and the eyes of Sauron watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we got really good at you it. got really good at it. You guys have done a great job. We ended up finalizing like 22, 23 assets, right? Yes. So, and then I did a webinar on a Monday night, kind of going through each asset. Hey, here's the 23 assets and here's the breakdown what we're doing. Um, here's kind of the numbers behind it. And here's what we're doing. Literally sharing our business model. And we raised quite a bit of money there that night. We got the deal funded roughly within 48 hours. Closed on that following Friday. All right. Um, got plenty of investors that wanted to invest some stuff. But hey, look, I'm not, well, can't get everybody involved, but we get you ready for the next tape. Yeah. Right. That's the thing. Hey, can't get you this time around. Let's get your. And some people are actually like, why didn't you make my money? I'm like, well, because somebody, like three people fund the whole deal. Okay. You know, the, and when they're funding, they're not, I'm not pulling money. Like if it's somebody's going to fund a hundred grand, they're going to get a hundred grand worth of assets as those, as their assets that they're, they're joint venture. They're not getting any uh, split of every asset. They're getting, oh, yeah, you get these 10, this person gets this 10, this five and this five. I'm partnering on them all. Um, but they're funding that chunk and, and then we're working through those out. <clears throat> now, then we fund <clears throat> and then the fund begins, right, everybody? Yes. Oh, yes. Now, of course, we always review collateral Once we get it. before we close to make sure we have that. We're pulling out any <clears throat> reports. And the collateral file, though, is has a lot of information that we can find out as well. So we've got a collateral file here, Jen has, and we see all sorts of good stuff. We got the uh, National Asset Advisors Checklist. Um, Quick claim deeds, all the good collateral. Yeah, I'm not worried so much about the contracts. A contract for deed, especially a company like NAA, they're fully enforceable. They do them a lot of the time. I'm not worried about that. What I really want to look at is the borrower's information. So why don't you flip over to that part of the <clears> aspect? <throat> it's like three pages aspect of, you know, <clears throat> Yeah, it's all here. It's all there. So <laughs> literally, it's like it's not like a true 1003 loan application. It's very simple form. Um, so we give them their, you know, what's on their social security numbers or telephone numbers? Um, name, phone numbers, um, employment, social security number, date of birth, 
marital status so, um, so, and, and emergency and, contact. So we get their spouse information. So yes. we can do more internet sleuthing on the spouse. Mm -hmm. We get their phone numbers. So we can do a reverse search mm -hmm. for phone numbers. Mm -hmm. We can call those numbers to see if they're working before we close. Right. <clears throat> what else? Uh, employment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who they're, what they do, which helps us when we do some internet sleuthing too, where they work mm -hmm. out with their barber shop or a landscaper or mm -hmm. a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer. We're not seeing many doctors and lawyers in these contracts for deep. Nope. That's okay. What else are we finding? Um, <clears throat> relative emergency contact. Relative emergency contact information and phone numbers for them too, right? Yep. Uh, name, uh, address, and phone numbers. Address and phone numbers. So it gives us a point of contact to reach out to in case you're not paying. Very, very valuable for us. <clears throat> Not only to check those and make sure they work or the numbers work before we close, but also do a little extra uh, sleuthing on the on the the, the um, family members. Now, if we find enough information on the, the people, I don't worry about the the family members, and that's what the things that you know, guys, you guys do. You're pulling phone numbers, Facebook profiles, LinkedIn profiles. Um, if we can find their em employment phone numbers for their job, that kind of stuff as well. So. Um, what else have we got? This is basically a lot of the rest of the contract for deeds, the property information, all that other good stuff. Yeah, right? I mean their their um, their agreement as far as payments and stuff like that. So, so let's go through this one here. So this one's in Toledo, Ohio, that we're looking at. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> now this one asset, I have seen it bounce around for a while. Yeah. Okay. I've seen it literally been on a list of contract for deeds for at least the last year. Yep. Yeah. Now, one thing that happened when we started looking, especially we mapped these out and take a look at it, right? Yes. What was one thing that kind of, th I think is probably throwing people for a loop when they were looking at the, the property online? Everyone thought it was a vacant lot. Right. Everybody thought it was a vacant lot. But if you look at the actual spreadsheet, what does the spreadsheet say? It has a vacant lot and an actual, it has two different addresses right. tied together um, and one contract. Exactly. So, but if you map it, <clears throat> You go to that vacant lot, mm -hmm. but right next door to it is what? If you scooch down and turn the corner on Google Maps, uh -huh. you find a house. You've got two story, yep. three bedroom, one bath, decent 1380 very, square foot house. Yeah, it's got a detached <clears throat> uh, two car garage, <throat> garage <throat> green trim. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, decent. It's like a kind of a weird corner lot yeah. aspect of right. it, right? Yeah. But a decent looking property. Yes. <clears throat> so we doing all this work on it. We're like, and then <clears throat> I'm looking at the spreadsheet and I actually have the spreadsheet here. So on this one, this spreadsheet is originally, yeah. So I got this originally spreadsheet. I got like January 12th of 2000. Oh, actually, no, this is this, this spreadsheet. This asset's been around for almost over a year and a half now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cause I got the spreadsheet originally. I looked back in my inbox to see, okay, when did I originally see this come on? And I missed this asset too. Okay. A lot of people miss this asset originally. It showed up January 12th, 2016 on a spreadsheet. That's a year, over a year and a half ago, everybody. Right. Okay. But on that spreadsheet, it showed for this one, I'm not going to give you the address, just give me some numbers here, everybody. <clears throat> Original loan amount was 31 grand. All right. It originated March 19th, 2012. Okay. It gave a last pay date of October 1st, 2016. So when the tape first came out, the bar was two months behind. Okay. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I take that back. They, they made a payment October 1st, 2016. Their due date was February 15th, 2016. So when they made their payment, they were still eight months behind, but they were at least Payment trying payments. to do that. Okay. Um, they still owe just right at 31 grand. They put a thousand dollars down as their down payment. All right. Three bedroom, one bath, actually uh, 1,530 square feet is what the BPO said versus the online. So they've got, I think, a basement probably also right. done some work on. House was built in 1927, owner-occupied. Now, <clears throat> the thing is their principal interest payment was two seventy-two twenty-seven a month, mm -hmm. okay? That's not a lot. 10% no. interest rate, 30-year AM, okay? Um, loan is set to mature in, it was a 30-year mortgage, so set to mature in March of 2042. Now, Zillow gave it a value, right? And if you have questions, make sure to ask your questions in the Facebook Live. Everybody, for watching live there, of course. Those that are watching on iTunes, just hang around. We'll probably answer your questions anyway. Okay. And you can always drop us an email as well. We'll go through some stuff with you as well at scott at weclosenotes.com or find us online at Facebook as well. But 
rent market rent rates in the in the neighborhood is about 800 bucks yes a month 850 right down the street is two properties three bedroom one bath uh, a little bit bigger square footage at you know 800 a month so there's plenty of room there that the bar need to make payments mm -hmm. can we agree to that everybody yes we don't run a charity okay could i be more sorry no i'm not sorry sorry no not at all you gotta make your payment on time okay so <clears throat> we offered up we finally got around to okay they're in the last 12 months uh, the new spreadsheet we got they had made an updated payment mm -hmm. this year so it, that's why it fell into that category all right but when i first saw this payment they had made a payment just a couple months ago. I missed yeah. this out a while back because I, my focus was a little bit different. Okay. So, which is funny is people are missing this asset because they're, they're taking their, copying their spreadsheet over and mapping it, but they're not literally on the spreadsheet. It says also uh, blank drive <laughs> vacant lot. Yeah. It says on the spreadsheet, you're going to get these. Well, two and assets. they're twisted because it said the vacant lot was one address. Yeah. And that's not actually the vacant lot address. It, they had it reversed as yep. far as the description. Yeah, so. exactly. So we purchased this asset when we actually, we bought it in uh, June. Into June. June. In the June. Closed on it June 29th. June 29th. So right before July 31st, we closed on it. It was part of a trade of uh, 40 some odd assets. All right. Um, it took a month. Over a month. Over a month, actually. You're right. It did take over a month. For us to get the collateral in, because we got the collateral in. I got the collateral in. in a week ago. Yeah, just a week ago we got a collateral on this. Took over a month. Actually, we delayed funding on another trade until we had the collateral right. because we're like, listen, it's over a month now. Trying to get the servicing transferred, we're transferring it over to Madison Management because our servicer are on these. All right, and so we're like, can we get the hello letters? Can we get all the stuff? And then the collateral shows up, and is it complete, Jen? No. What was wrong with the collateral? I didn't have any quick claim deeds. Any quick claim deeds? Because in this case, the contract for deed, Harbor owns the property. They've done a contract for deed to the borrower. Mm -hmm. We'll just say her name is Mrs. Smith today. Mm -hmm. Right. So to transfer the asset, it's a quick claim deed transferring the deed from Harbor to us, doesn't right. it? And transfer assignment of the contract. Right. So okay. that we can record it. Exactly. Record to show ownership. So we got all these files and there's no ownership documents in the files, right? None. So, Jen, you spent how long creating new quick king deeds to send back to Harbor to get signed and notarized? Uh, three days? Two, well, three days, but one of them included a Saturday. <laughs> Why you throw that in there so I could get them done uh -huh. and ready to go out on Monday back to Harbor to get signed. Yep. And then what shows up? On Monday? <laughs> yes. A separate file with 40 quick claim deeds in it. <laughs> so, that's what happened. Did they notify you that it was happening? No. No. No, exactly. So Jen spent three days working on stuff that she didn't have to work on, which happens. Okay. Unfortunately, it happens sometimes. But I smiled through it all. Smiled through it all, but you know what? <laughs> exactly. She cussed a little bit. <laughs> Not <right>. at all. <laughs> that was a little bit of... You were in Cape Coral enjoying yourself. Thank you. Yeah, I was in Cape, Cape Coral. We were diving through a mountain of collateral. Yeah, a desktop of collateral could not All you could see was my bun. Right. Um, not her bum, her bun. Okay. <laughs> That make it a little bit differently yeah. interesting image there. All right. So, but anyway, so finally we get the collateral corrected. Yes. All right. It's the servicing is transferred finally after 30 days. It, it was in the process. Yes. It's in the process. And then what happened? Um, in the process, um, the borrower received a letter. So let's figure this out real fast. Just so everybody knows, because what happens when an asset is sold, the seller sends out a goodbye letter. Yes. And they also send a hello letter or goodbye letter to the servicing company, in this case, mass management, to say, okay, here's the letter. Is everything correct? Here's all the contact information. Is that accurate? Here's your problem. Here's your yeah. problem. So <laughs> they send out a goodbye letter. Hey, thanks for not paying us. Yeah. Now, now you cannot pay inverse ventures or inverse asset right. fund or these people. Okay. And it's also up to our servicer, Madison, in this case, to send a hello letter. Hi, thank you for not paying, but now you got to pay us, right? Yeah. But what happens? You got something that popped up. Um, the borrower reached out to us, um, because they received their letter saying that their contract was, was void and going to a new servicer. And so she freaked out a little bit. Um, and the old servicer gave them our contact information because Madison hadn't picked it up yet. And so the borrower called us yeah. and said, I've made my payments. Um, I, I haven't made a payment for this month, but I have it ready. I was told not to pay it. Why is my contract canceled? 
um, who are you? How can I pay you? And I want to stay in my house. Exactly. Now, the thing is, she said she's got canceled payments from the last 12 months, right? Yes. So that means this is a note of a different color. Yes. It's a deal of a different color. It's no longer a non-performing note. It's a performing note, really, yes. that we got at a non-performing price. Right. It's an error on the seller's part because they didn't do their due diligence on their files. Right. We come out looking really good because now we've got an asset borrowers ready to make a payment or two, make this month's payment and last month's payment because she didn't, she's been sitting there, right. wants to stay in the house. The house is worth somewhere around 45. So she's got some equity. She owes 31 some change, literally some change. So she's got some equity. She, pride of ownership, wants to stay in the house. Right. Now, hope, we did some quick search. We're hoping her husband is not the rapper that got killed by Antonio. <laughs> oh, the, the rival. The rival gang, gang lord oh, or whatever like that. Lord. But we find, you know, they're landscapers. Yeah. Based on that, based on the, the, the file here, uh, we found like it looks like the uh, the borrower, Miss Smith, has like three Facebook profiles, mm -hmm. you know. So we don't have to reach out to her because she's already reached out to us. Yes. And we've got what kind of information besides her phone numbers in the file? What else do we have? Um. Well, we have her her email. Now we have her proof of of payments. Yep. Um. Uh, a little bit of personal information. Um. But we have a, a warm. Well, yeah, and, and and her thing, she called flipping out, saying, "I don't want to get kicked out of my house. The servicer canceled my contract. So what do we do? We're like, give us a second. We're your new, you know, we we own the debt now. Yeah. Um, let's work something out. We want to, you know, we're not here to kick you out of your home. We want to, and I know Madison's going to take care of all this yes. and everything. But in the meantime, we gave her comfort. We said, hey, we'll work with you. Um, I did ask her, I was like, are you still employed? And she said, yes. I said, are you still able to make the current payments that you're making? Um, she said, yes, I have August payment here. I just haven't mailed it yet. Cause I don't know where to mail it to. And yep. I said, well, bear with us, hold on to it. You're going to make a payment, but we'll keep you at the same payment. Um, now that's another thing too. Yeah. Well, her payment here on the contract is like two seventy two a month. How much was she actually making payments though? Five sixty eighty seven. Five sixty eighty seven. Okay. Yeah. Now, I don't think I mentioned what we bought the asset for, though, did I? No. 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 So uh, we originally offered nine. Mm -hmm. They counted back at 16. We settled on 13. Mm -hmm. Okay. 13 and some change. Um, I ended up having an investor fund this at 15, put a little bit extra just for some servicing holding costs along the way, which we probably won't need, which is great. But the 15 number, even if we did that. So let's, let's run some numbers here real fast, everybody. So. We took their existing payment, 272.27 times 12. That's 68.67, basically 6,800 bucks we come in. And we had 15,000 basically funded on that. That's a phenomenal return uh, at great returns of 45%. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is like 45.8. Yeah, 45.8 if she makes a payment of 272.27. Right. Now, but she's making more than that, though. She's, she's like over. She's doubling it, basically. Doubling. She's making double payments on yeah. stuff. So her payment is how much? Five sixty eighty seven. Divided. Well, hang on here. Have to right, put the right period in there. Five sixty point eight seven times twelve. That comes to sixty seven thirty. Hang on. So my I must my number wrong. Here. Hang on. Two seventy two point two seven times twelve. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. I calculated wrong initially. So if I figure, <clears throat> take it back here. Her existing payment was 272.27. Mm -hmm. That times 12 is 32.67 in 12 months. Divide that by, whoops, right here, 32.67. Divided by, divide that by, um, my calculator is actually going to work. 32.67 divided by $15,000 investment. That's a 22% yield on that. Right. So it's, it's right in the ballpark of what we right. thought initially. Right. Okay. It was over 20. I thought we'd make up a little bit. Okay. We'll be good. But yes, she's making a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. So 560.87. Yep. Divide that by 15 grand. Yeah. It's about a 45% yield with her making the payments on time. So instead of a 22% return, we got 45%. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Phenomenal deal. Yes. yes phenomenal deal there better she wants to a bit better than we thought yeah but that's one of the things that we we maybe rolled the dice a little bit right. and said okay it's occupied they want to stay looks like a decent property let's we got some information let's go with it and it's turned out to be valuable right everybody now 
let's talk about some things. If she's making payments on time right now, <clears throat> and she's done it for more than 12 months, what can we do? This is a test for you guys. You know, you hear me talk about this all the time. We should resell it as a performing. Say that louder, Greg. We could resell it as a performing note. We could turn it around and resell it as a reperforming note. Now, a 45% yield is pretty damn good. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Pretty good, right? So, but let's look through this. So she, so she owes 31 grand. Oops, hang on here. So 31,000 is what she owes. Now, if somebody wanted to make a 12% return on their money, that means we'd have to pay them 37.20 a year and a 31 grand. So we could divide that by 12 months, basically 310 a month. Okay. So as long as she keeps making her payments or extra payments, we could get somebody to bring their 31 grand, cash out our investors, give them a good return, yeah. seventy five hundred. Basically, give them we got fifteen grand to split, so they get seventy five hundred dollars profits on their fifteen grand investment. What kind of return is that to them? It's a fifty percent return. But if we did that in ninety days. How do you annualize that? Mm. A lot, right? I like it a lot. A lot. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, five hundred dollars a month or seventy five hundred bucks. You're not going to get rich off of that. Not going to get rich off of that. But it's a great way to show some great returns. And add some chunks back. Now, you, if your IRA only had twenty grand in it, now you got twenty seven grand in it. Yeah. Now you got thirty grand or something like that going for. Especially doing it more so. And we closed on forty of these. Yeah. Okay. All within sixty days of closing, too. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So that's the beautiful thing about this is our goal. Now, if we say still though, let's say we have somebody else that it doesn't pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other deal we got to evict. Well, we're still, still looking. If we've got forty five percent on one deal and zero percent on another one. What's that come to? Still 22.5% return right. if you blend it across the place. So do we have any questions for anybody? We have a lot of people watching. Okay, we got quite a few people watching. That's great. So that's what I'm trying to get at. This deal not only gives us some room on another one, it may possibly give us room on a second one. So we can turn around, sell it as a real performer, cash out our other investor on this. They're happy. They're sitting like a pig and slop. Then we're also got a cash flow in return. We got an asset that's returning money to us on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Basically, I have none of my own money in this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm seeing an infant return on investment, right, everybody? Right. Yeah. So that's the beautiful thing on this. And we've got a borrower that's happy. We have a good rapport with her. She, she already called me back and um, and was giving me information as far as... Um, Speak louder. Um, we, we have a good reputation with her as well now um, because she's already called back saying that she contacted NAA um, regarding her payment to let them know that she wasn't going to be mailing the payment to them. Um, she said that she would wait and get the information from me as far as where to mail the payment to. So I've already had about two or three conversations with her since the initial contact. Right. And you said over the payment instructions to start off yeah. the Madison's website. So yeah. now we've got money coming in extra. Right. <clears throat> she started to make a payment. So maybe we don't see 12 months of payments. We see 13 or 14 months of payments right. for 12 months because she makes up her extra payment and a half. Right. But we also have that personal touch where if she does run into an issue, I have a feeling that we would have that communication to where we can work out and negotiate as we need to. Exactly. Exactly. So this is what I love. Do I dance a little jig when stuff like this happens in the office? Uh, yes. <clears throat> I get very excited you for bust, stuff like that. Bust I bust down the door. I bust down a, bust a move. You bust or, down the door. Oh, bust down the door. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Totally. It's like the um, Kool-Aid man. He wants to. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that's the, the, the beautiful thing about a lot of these deals, everybody, is <clears throat> a lot of people will do a little bit of due diligence and they make some offers, but then they shy away and they get scared. They don't send a realtor out. They don't make a, a few phone calls. They suffer from paralysis analysis. Okay. They aren't taking an extra step to double check their, they're making a bid and then it comes time for them to accept a counter, you know, counter a counter. They don't do any due diligence after they make their bids and they're scared. They cancel the bids. So they miss out on deals like this. And I think this bid deal's probably been bid on three or four times from people and canceled. Yes. I know it has. As a matter of fact, on a tape not too long ago, we had three people. We had three, three people, three bid, people on. bid on the same asset and then they all ended up kicking. Actually, two of them retracted before we ever actually placed the bids from everyone. And then the other person ended up retracting after the counter came back. Yeah. 
Well, I redlined this one too when it came through, and then we had the discussion. Yeah. But that's the thing we looked at the, that nasty vacant lot. Yeah. In our office alone, just from the time we got this tape to the time we actually closed on it, y'all tried to kill this thing like eight times. <laughs> oh, it's a vacant lot. I was like, it's not a vacant lot. <laughs> <laughs> but that's see, that's one thing you got to keep in mind too. If you're outsourcing due diligence, you got to double check sometimes. Yeah. You got to make some notes. You got to take a look at some things, and that's okay. It's a learning thing. You know, um, it's a numbers game too, right? Yes. It's a numbers game too. So out of these 40, if we have 20 that perform, great. It will still see a phenomenal return. 20 that don't, great. We'll evict, for, you know, foreclose, sell the assets off real fast. Right. Tell them the next door neighbor. Now, <clears throat> tell them, tell them the next door neighbor. so Greg, you, we, we bought uh, an asset mm -hmm. in uh, Lake Station, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Indiana. Indiana, thank yes, you. Indiana. Yes. Outside of Gary. Um, not in Gary, thank God. <laughs> All right. But you drove by the property. Yes. And it was vacant. Uh, we were coming back from Cape Coral, the mastermind, and I decided to stop in Indiana. So hang on a second. Wait a second. Um, Indiana is not on the way <laughs> to Houston from Cape Coral. That's a bit of a detour, my yeah, friend. Yeah, we, we detoured. We did okay. To, uh, to so check you, out some assets. And, so uh, you're in your dad, flipped to Chicago. Right. And drove into Indiana. To look at some assets to that he's buying. some that are in a, and they're South Bend. Yeah. And then we had one in South Bend with yep. we closed notes. And then uh, Lake Station was on the way back to the airport. So we stopped in there to look at that one. And um, it was vacant, but the yard was kept up and uh, completely vacant. It wasn't even trashed out. The house was just, there's just nothing in there except a boat in the front yard. And um, the neighborhood looked good. And then I took a couple photos um, of the property and came back and we kind of were talking about it. And then you got a call on Thursday. The same yeah. day, the same day we did this one, literally two hours later, the neighbor. So yeah, so we're looking at this other asset, and honestly, we knew it was vacant when we bought it. Right. Mm -hmm. We had our buddy Gene Chandler drive by. He went up, took photos, drove around it. Property's in good shape. I guess the neighbors cleaning it. Power's off, but it's in good shape. Mm -hmm. Clean, not trashed out. It just need, it needs a little bit of work, paint and carpet. Yeah. Um, but not too bad. There's a tarp on the back roof a little bit, but there's no water spots on the inside. Somebody did a little bit of job, so. It's great. Yeah. And I get a missed phone call this weekend and I'm big on the phone call. It's the next door neighbor to this house that we bought. Next door neighbor is the one that's been mowing the lawn. Next one. She's like, I want to buy this asset. I want me, my son want to buy it for him to move. I'm like, man, I feel sorry for your son. That's really close to mom. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, if mom's going to write the check, good for you. <laughs> okay. All right. If you can't travel across town. You can only leave the across the driveway. But anyway, that one, we got an offer coming on that one today from the homeowner. Yeah. You know, she's like, oh, it needs this work. And I'm like, we know what it needs. Yeah. We've got photos, videos. videos, that kind of stuff. We know what about this asset compared to the rest of the assets on the block, Greg? It, it is the black eye of the at the, the um, neighborhood, but it's still not, it's not terrible. It's not terrible. It's just, no one's living there, so it's just not. Right. It's got Jumanji in the backyard. Yeah. It's got high weeds, which we might uncover, who knows? <laughs> Something. The front yard's clean. The back front yard's clean. Got a boat. Anybody want a house on the boat? Yeah. You want to buy a note on a boat and a house with a goat? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a Dr. Seuss song, right? So, but that's some of the things we see. So, hey, we got one in here. Boom. Knocking two out right there. Got more we'll be diving on as well, especially as the letters hit them, as we're dropping out letters. We start making phone calls initially. Now, some people ask, well, Scott, why are you making phone calls, not letting Madison handle it? Well, Madison's okay, but most servicing companies are, aren't going to be as aggressive with on their call-outs as we would. That's why we're going to go ahead and send a letter. That's why we're also going to do some quick phone calls. Because if we can make a couple phone calls and get borrowers back on track, it saves us a lot of money that we don't pay in servicing fees. Well, and it gives us that rapport as well. Yeah, I don't, yeah, exactly. It gives us the borrower somebody to call in case something wrong. Now, I would not do that if you're brand new. Because no. you're not going to know what the heck you're going to do. You don't know what to say, what not to say. Well, you're going to be, ah, okay? It's best to outsource this. Like the law of Daniel Singer. <clears throat> and we're working with Daniel and Joel over there as well to kind of have them take some assets. Okay, here you go. Give us a quick run. See if we get right party contact. If not, let's move to eviction. Let's move to foreclose so we can sell these assets off. Okay. Any questions from anybody? No. Uh, anybody that's watching on Facebook, has this been helpful for you? I'd love to hear, see your comments if this has been helpful. If you're listening on iTunes, thank you for, uh, for listening. Once again, we have these types of deals all the time. Uh, that we work through. Um, we're working through a couple tapes of performing stuff that we'll be doing a, uh, a draft 
over the next week or two on actually. Nice. I got some stuff in yesterday we've been working through. So if you'd like to get on our buyers list, you can go to weclosenotes.com and up on what will pop up is a little tab that says buy notes. It's at the very top. It'll be join mastermind, fast track. I think I think fast track and it'll just say buy notes and just click on that one. Yeah, buy notes. It'll take you into a uh, sign up sheet, <clears throat> name, email, phone number, and then you'll be alerted of any assets that we have available or any drafts that we do highlighting assets that we have available for sale. So, or potential funny partnerships that we are doing on a regular basis for our own stuff. So hopefully this has been valuable. We're going to be focused on a deal pretty much at least once a week for the most part, unless we get too many guests on. But um, this is one thing that I think a lot of podcasts lack a lot of time, consistent deal flow and sharing those deals. A lot of people get into talking about the business and talking and talking and talking They don't actually share what they're doing in the business. And that's one thing. Hey, we're the note closers show. We want to keep the closing part versus the note talking show, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. By closing deals, making it happen, getting some good returns, and then sharing our success along the way, sharing what we're doing on a daily, weekly, monthly basis with you to help you take more steps and be more efficient in your note business to help you close more notes. So, I think we've got a good spot. I think it's been a pretty yeah, good show, everybody. Yeah, huh? good. good stuff today. No yes. new stuff, everybody. Um, that will wrap it up for the day. I gotta give a big shout out to uh, of course our amazing staff in here. Yay! Yay. <clears throat> Doing a great job. Due diligence, our vendors who've helped us out along the way as well, and our sponsors. So once again, uh have a great day. Go make something happen, and uh, we'll see you all at the top, everybody.